I like this Forthos dungeon place. Niche, quiet, zombies and spiders aside, it's a pretty cozy- What the hell is that? Has- was that there this whole time? I can understand elf slayer tasks since elves are sort of far off distant creatures, these arcane beasts, what are they, who knows? They're people, but slayer masters might not realize that and they might think they're some sort of weird monster. Dwarf tasks though, these guys are a short walk away from Turiel and he's had me kill hundreds at this point. It feels kind of wrong, but slayer points, gotta do it. Since we're doing slayer and we're boosting slayer points, it's not a surprise that Turiel eventually gave me a spider task and I can't think of a better time to try out Sarachnus than during a Spider Slayer task. The extra damage and accuracy from the Black Mask should help significantly. This lovely lady is weak to crush, so I brought a Dragon Mace as my primary weapon. I'll also use it as a spec weapon. I don't know how good it'll be, but... Oh, Sandwich Lady, I... No, no thanks, my inventory's full. Dragon Hide is recommended since the Magic Spider minion is apparently somewhat strong. I only have Blue Dehide since my range level is terrible. This entire setup is budget as hell. But I think Seracnus is supposed to be a mid-level boss anyway, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just watching this guy kill her to see what I'm working with. They're not using a crush weapon though. They're using Osmumpton's Fang, I think. Is that what that is? It has a unique accuracy effect, so that probably outweighs the spider's higher stab defense. Although I'm sure like a bludgeon would probably still be better anyway. The combat achievements here seem simple, but a couple of them require perfect execution of the fight. Certainly possible for me right now with enough practice, but the longer the fight, the more chances I have to slip up. So it'll be a lot easier with better gear, just because the fights will be shorter. Ready to pounce, kill Seracnus without her using her ranged attack twice in a row. You need to run into her melee range immediately after breaking free of her web so she uses melee before using range a second time. Screw up once and you fail. The other tough achievement, Insect Repellent, requires you to kill her without taking any damage. And that means perfect prayer switching throughout the entire fight. You can see why ending this fight as fast as possible would be useful here. Although I guess you could kill her very slowly with ranged or magic and just keep protect from ranged up the entire time. That actually might work now that I'm thinking about it. I wonder if there's any drawbacks to that. Maybe when I get a better range level, I'll give that a whirl. The easiest achievement is newspaper enthusiast kill her with a crush weapon. And since that's the recommended weapon type to use, there's really no reason not to be able to get that. I will say this though, the insect repellent achievement makes no sense because spiders aren't insects. And newspaper enthusiast implies that you should kill spiders and you shouldn't because spiders are good guys. They're very good to have around. They themselves are the insect repellents. Also, insect repellent wouldn't be effective on spiders because they don't drag their bodies on the ground. They walk with their bodies elevated off the ground so they don't really walk through the poison. So spraying poison doesn't actually kill the spiders. It just kills their food. So that would reduce the amount of spiders you would see, but not because you're killing the spiders. That's newspaper enthusiast, and as a drop, we get some coins and a tattered moon page. I have no idea what the page is. I'm gonna assume it's a lore thing. So the dragon mace ain't all that good, but I did get 70 attack last time in the nightmare zone, and I know of a pretty strong weapon that's very cheap and has a crush attack style, the Saradoman sword. I remember back in the day, this was an amazing weapon for killing water fiends and gathering crimson charms. This was probably back in like 2009. It attacks as fast as a whip and has a crush option, which water fiends were, and I think still are, very weak to. I don't think people really kill water fiends nowadays, considering why would you? But you know, 15 years ago when RS3 was RS2 still, pre-EOC, people would train summoning by killing water fiends to collect charms. If you don't know anything about summoning, don't worry about it. It was expensive at the time though, probably because of its crimson charm gathering capabilities. Now in old school, it doesn't really have a niche. So it's pretty damn affordable. So affordable that this might be my go-to strength training weapon. I'll need to do a bit of reading up on DPS and whatnot, but I believe a Saradoman sword is better than a dragon scimitar and dragon defender. An abyssal dagger with a dragon defender would probably be a better option for training strength than a Saradoman sword, but that's almost 20 times more expensive than a Saradoman sword, so... I don't know if I could say the Saradoman sword is worse than the dragon mace, but now that I'm looking at the stats, a dragon mace with a defender has a higher crush bonus than just the Saradoman sword. It's 60 versus 83. In fact, the dragon mace and the Saradoman sword have the same crush bonus. It's just that the Saradoman sword is a two handed weapon, so you lose the opportunity to be able to wield a defender, thereby giving you less crush bonus. However, the Sarah sword has a higher strength bonus than the dragon mace and defender combined. I don't know how the higher strength bonus of the sword factors into the lower accuracy if the higher strength bonus is better than having a higher hit chance. I guess it depends on how much of each you have. Who could say? I'm sure there's a calculator that can figure it out. Another option I have is a Seracnus Cudgel. Probably would have been a smart purchase instead of the Sarah sword. Oh well. The next time I try out Seracnus, I'll look into getting one. God 
damn it. I had protect ranged on for the projectile, but I got too close to her before the projectile hit me and she smacked me with her feet. Well, that Seracnus stuff was a bit of a wash. It was an interesting experience, though it'll be nice to go back there at some point. But after doing enough tutorial tasks, we're now at task number 20. Konar's the best master I can use right now, so hopefully she doesn't send me somewhere inconvenient. 50 Anku in the Stronghold Slayer dungeon. Easy enough. Another nine tutorial tasks later, and we're back at Mount Karom for another Konar task. You know, I have a question. Is there a reason she's the only female here? Or can these creatures choose their forms and all the other ones prefer to look like dumpy little gremlins? More Anku? Ah, but this time it's in the Catacombs of Current. You're doing great, she said. Go kill 14 black dragons, she said. No, oh, that shouldn't be too bad, I said. What a surprise that dragons, the things literally made out of dragon hide, are highly resistant to magic. I'm killing their babies instead. Okay, this task is going to take a while, I'm sure, but I can't pass up the opportunity to train my ranged here. I did already get 60 ranged on a Turiel Banshee task and upgraded to Red Dragon Hide, and I will get 61 on this task, which is why I have a Rune Crossbow and some bolts in my inventory. There's an argument to be made that an imbued Magic Shortbow, which I'm not currently using, this is just a regular one, with Rune Arrows would be better than a Rune Crossbow with Adamant Bolts. Magic Shortbows don't hit as hard, but they're faster. However, rune crossbows have a higher ranged attack bonus. For enemies with higher defenses, the crossbow outperforms the shortbow, and I think these demons qualify as having higher defense. Also, I wasn't going to use rune arrows anyway. I'm not using rune arrows now. I'm using adamant. They are way cheaper. Like, ten times cheaper. I saved up on quite a few Slayer points, and I think it's high time I started spending them. I'm buying bigger and badder as my first Slayer unlock. I don't know what the optimal unlock order is, if there is one, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was at the top of most people's lists. With this unlock, there is a 1 in 200 chance that a more powerful version of a monster will spawn after slaying one on a task. This only applies to a select list of monsters, but these powerful versions, all of which have unique models and in some cases unique mechanics, give boosted Slayer XP and have a chance to drop some really good loot. An Eternal Gem, which sells for 10 mil, can make a Slayer Ring with unlimited charges. An Imbued Heart, which sells for almost 100 mil, can boost your magic level by 1 plus 10% rounded down of your level once every 7 minutes. Imagine getting that randomly when killing Bloodvelds. There are also the Mist and Dust battle staves, but they're not all that valuable. Not only are they not super sought after, but they're also the most commonly dropped rares from these superior variants. Turiel gave me a cave crawler task, and they do have a superior version. Will I see my first superior on the first task I do after unlocking the perk? No. 125 black demons in the catacombs of Curend. Hmm. Is this something I want to do? Kind of tough, because on the one hand, I could definitely safe spot them. On the other hand, that is going to take forever. They are very weak to magic. 157 health. It'd probably take about 12 casts of Ivan's Blast to kill each one. So I probably need about 15, 1600 death runes. 45,000 base XP plus the damage. Be about another 40,000. So it'll be like 85,000 magic XP. Um, no. 50 Anku. Oh, that's way easier. Ooh, a Dark Totem base. Nice. Lucky, too. Superior creatures that spawn in the catacombs are guaranteed to drop one of the three pieces of the Dark Totem, but every monster in the catacombs has a slight chance to drop a piece regardless. These Anku have a 1 in 440 chance of dropping one, so yeah, this is pretty lucky if you ask me. Dark Totem Middle. Two totem pieces on a task of 50 Anku. I'm not sure why I'm so excited. I, I don't think I could kill Skatizo all that easily at my current level. If I had Arclight, maybe. By the time I get a third totem piece, I'll probably be ready to fight Skatizo. Back here with my girlfriend. Got a task for me? 165 Greater Demons on the Isle of Souls? Sounds good. But you know what? I got some extra Slayer points again. Thinking it's time I buy another unlock. Malevolent Masquerade. Learn how to craft a Slayer helmet by combining all Slayer headgear with a black mask. I know it's probably not the best use of points, 
blocking tasks might actually be smarter, but I need to get rid of this silly looking black mask. As we all know, nothing's more important in an RPG than fashion. The stats of the Slayer helmet are comparable to a Rune Full Helm, so it does have some use besides being able to get the black mask buff when killing Banshees or Aberrant Spectres, the latter of which I don't actually have the level for anyway. So better defenses and it looks nice. It is a shame it has negative magic and ranged defensive bonuses. Technically, now that I really think about it, upgrading to the helm made my ranged safe spotting loadout worse. Not by much, but still worse. The defenses aren't helping me, and I have slightly less ranged accuracy. Oh well, at least I look good. Well, at least I look better. Let's see what our first brimstone key gives us. Hopefully it's something nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. 180k. All right. So yeah, this is different. Chaos Elemental. Turns out you can flinch it. I was looking through some of the combat achievements and saw one called the Flincher. Kill the Chaos Elemental without taking damage from its attacks. Obviously I already failed that, but I'd like to get at least one kill this way. How you're supposed to get it trapped like this without taking damage sounds impossible, but I mean, I guess there must be some way to do it. A slower, heavier hitting weapon would be better here, but I didn't have one. That's why I'm speeding up this footage. That took about 15 minutes, but I completed the hard combat task hoarder. Kill the Chaos Elemental without it unequipping any of your items. As long as your inventory is full, the elemental cannot unequip your weapons. That's why I have a bunch of curry. The bowl stays in your inventory after you drink it. Just like real life, bowls don't, um, they don't vanish after you eat the food that's in them. Unless it's a taco bowl. But it's less that it disappears and the more that you eat it. There's injera too, but that's more like a plate than a bowl. I have a hard clue. The one with the rune hammer and the fishing guild. You know the one, you, 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 you've met. You need 63 fishing at the very least to boost with an admiral pie to enter the guild. A simple enough task, but before I get back onto the fishing grind, I want to get the full angler outfit. I got the boots a while back, but that doesn't mean this grind won't be short. Will it take 10 trips? 20? 50 for the remaining pieces? Let's find out. The top took about 40 trips. 1 in 12 chance. Uh-huh. Waiters coming in 8 trips later. Better odds there. And the final piece comes in 23 more trips. A total of 71 trips on the trawler for all four pieces of the outfit. There's a graph on the wiki that says not getting the full set within 71 trips is roughly a 15% chance. Not unreasonable odds, I could have gone way drier on this. On average, you'll get the full set in 44 trips, 50-50 chance. But just because something's 50-50 doesn't mean it's always going to happen 50% of the time. If every 44 trips has a 50% chance of you getting all four pieces, it's totally possible for you to go 400 trips without seeing any pieces. Because even though it's unlikely, it's totally possible to flip heads 10 times in a row. So it's totally possible to do 44 trips 10 times and get absolutely nothing. This outfit makes my head look huge. I tried three ticking or two ticking or whatever the hell. I really did try, but man. It is not sustainable. Neither physically nor mentally can I keep up tick manipulation for more than like 10 minutes. Regardless, here's 62 fishing. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Not quite what we need, but Swan Song gives 50,000 fishing XP as a reward. Why fish when you can quest? But I need 66 magic. I mean, I could boost with a wizard mind bomb since I just need the level to enter the mages guild, but I need the magic levels anyway. So where better to train magic than at the mages training arena? The hard lumbridge and draenor diary requires me to unlock bones to peaches. So I'd want to do this grind eventually anyway. Why not now? One spell, please. Just gotta cast it in Alcarid. Excuse me, sir. I have need of your bones. Excellent. On to one small favor. We gotta help out Laurel Salika here. Get him some red mahogany. Shouldn't take too long.
See, no time at all. Not sure why people hate this guy so much. Onward to Swan Song. This is the Sea Troll Queen. Does her existence imply that sea trolls are some kind of a cephalopod? A larval stage, perhaps? Do sea trolls become krakens later in life? Or do krakens become sea trolls? Questions that'll probably never be answered. Lots of XP from this quest and 63 fishing. Time to do that clue. Blow a raspberry. Next step, Jimmy Dazzler's drawers. So the drop rate for blessed armadillo gear is two and three. That's the only conclusion I can come to. <laughs> Next time, speed running.